Hey, good afternoon. Um, I'd like to acknowledge my co-authors, uh, Jean Wally and Francois Charbonneau, who were the smart guys that did all the work. Um, uh, I'll talk about high resolution and I'll talk about a rapid revisit, um, mainly in areas of Canada, uh, because I'm tasked to, um, to come up with ideas with regards to a new satellite, uh, with regards to these things. <clears throat> The objective of this um, work is to really give you examples, and there are many, many examples. I only picked three of them, uh, to look at uh, how we use INSAR, or radar satellites, to monitor deformation. We have a lot of deformation active sites in Canada, mainly along strategic transportation corridor, energy corridors, and, and focusing on the process. Uh, and the reason for this, um, is uh, I am the chief scientist for the RadarSat constellation. Uh, that's the three satellites, which is um, tasked. Uh, it would be launched in 2018. And these satellites are, are not shared only by our work in the solid earth side. The defense department, the food security department, NATO. So we have agreements to share these payloads with a number of clients. And therefore, you cannot have these satellites looking at your site all the time. So from a policy standpoint, if you are monitoring a strategic and energy corridor, you have to give good reasons why you want to watch these corridors with three satellites, in our case, all year, or why you want to watch it in the summertime or the springtime. And the satellites are being programmed to watch these at all times. So because you have these payloads, these payloads are not there for free. And particularly it's a government payload, it is to look at the territory on strategic corridors. And in our case, in my case, it is strictly to look at energy corridors and transportation corridors. The country is very big, you don't look at all it. It's a background mission, if you like. So that's the, the motivation of what this work is all about. Um, our, we, I'm looking, in, in my laboratory, I'm looking at the earthquake sites, landslide site deformation, and in our case, oil sands, which is a big deal for, for Canada. Uh, I will only pick three sites, uh, just to give you an indication of why you would want the rapid high deformation revisit on these new preloads. The first one is, a, all landslides are different. You've heard some which are triggered by heavy rainfall. Some are triggered by earthquakes. Others, in our case, are triggered by permafrost. So in Canada, if you want to watch a permafrost-triggered landslide, you have to give reason. Are you going to watch it all year or certain times of the year because of, of condition? The satellite has its, uh, its, it may be looking at the security side for the military folks. In this case, this is a highly fractured landslide, which is threatening one of our highways in Quebec. It's, and it's very active. So the question is if we can continue to watch this from space with three satellites integrated with ground monitoring, um, we, we need to say is it going to be watched from January to December or in the springtime or what have you. So that's the motivation for this, these kinds of things. Here's the geology. It is uh, basically, and the knowledge we get from this particular landslide is highly fractured, and these blocks are very complex. They move differently. So when one blocks move different, it triggers the others. And the direction of each blocks, so they're very complex systems. And uh, so this, the, the satellite must be able to look at it from an ascending or a descending mode, or if you're asked for a rapid revisit every four or five days, it must be integrated. So we have uh, deployed a number of corner reflectors in this particular landslide, just to give an indication of how we're gonna be develop these guidelines. They're both ascending and descending, and one of my colleagues here from JPL mentioned the use of ascending and descending, where you increase your revisit time, particularly for this reason. Now imagine if you have three satellites, both ascending and descending, you're obviously increasing quite a bit. So that's the motivation here. Uh, these, are, these are the corner reflectors both, uh, 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 that was deployed in this particular rock slide, just to give you an indication of the robustness of the science in order to do the policy. Uh, because nothing is free. Satellites 
uh, data is very, very expensive. And if you are programming the satellite, it must be responsible. Um, the, the, in this particular rock slide, look at the direction. This is the descending mode, and you can see the direction which is uh, moving towards the coastline, and it shows that parts of it is moving different, different ways and different speed, if you like. You combine the ascent and descending of these complex systems. You see the green arrow shows the ascent and descending in which we're trying to, to make sure that uh, these things are uh, moving in, in a very complex way. And that's the, um, the final um, the slide, which shows the, this particular rock slide and moving different blocks. The, the, the INSAR data is compared with crack meters and other monitoring, in situ monitoring tool. So the question is if the space agency is going to deploy and program the, the satellite for a whole year, it is compared with other measurements for the strategic transportation. The next area I'll move to is permafrost. Uh, I'm sure I'm in Southern California. You don't know a lot about permafrost here. But most of Canada is, uh, at least two thirds of Canada is, uh, is frozen. And we have permafrost and we're putting a lot of pipelines uh, in the north, transporting both oil and gas. And some is coming from the, uh, the Alaska through Canada. So we need to have transportation routes. And here's the science. All these green dots over in the other corner. Uh, we don't have a. Point, here we are. That's about 400 landslides over a five kilometers area. That's the kind of permafrost degradation we are having along these corridors. So to, to deploy satellites to watch currently, that's how these features look like. And if you're gonna put a pipeline through there, your foundation, the geomechanics of that foundation is very critical. So to deploy satellites to continue watch your pipeline, it's integral part for you to start doing the monitoring the science behind it. Now this is an indication to, sh to show how the line of sight measurements from both radar sat and, um, and Terrasar. Uh, if you notice here, I'll just give one example uh, without going into details. Let's get the pointer here. That's the, the dark line, that's a radar set, and that's a radar set. The rest are cost, uh, not cost, it's the Terrasar. So you see the rapid revisits giving far more information on the actual melting patterns that are being missed from these, these, uh, these other satellites. The, the final uh, uh, one, uh, I've gone very quickly, the final one is uh, deformation based on oil sands. Uh, the, in the case of oil sands, there's a couple of things that happen. Steam is injected in the ground. It's a little different from fracking. And the steam is injected, uh, and then you have various things. It increases the pressure and the temperature, uh, and that creates, it's if you like, swelling. And you can't have spillage from the swelling because the engineering is under pressure. And these things are regulated. And, and so we need to watch what the oil companies are doing in, in Alberta, in this our case. And therefore, INSAR has been used by the regulator and by the government of Canada, and also by the companies, as part of the monitoring tool of looking at this deformation occurring in these steam injection. Uh, this is only one example. That's the topography, and I'll just take one well, just to give you an example of the deformation that occurs on that particular well. And here's the result. This is profile shows the steam, and the red shows the profile of the INSAR over time. And the top here shows a deformation, which is equivalent to two, to two centimeters per year. So the question is, the deformation can be monitored. So if you're gonna program a constellation, this is gonna be throughout the whole year. So the conclusion is, to program a satellite for various parts of Canada, which is a wide, large property, it's half of a continent, and the satellite is programmed to only look at these strategically. In the case of rock slides, which we along highways, look at the geo geomechanical side, we need continuous INSAR monitoring, the science behind the continuous INSAR monitoring. 
when you're looking at permafrost, we don't need that continuous. We only need it in the summertime. Improving the monitor, understand the behavior of permafrost along the pipeline road, the summer melting season is critical. So the satellite payload can be doing other things at the same time. Because the military folks and the field security code, oceanographer, all these people want the use of that satellite. And in the case of oil sands, where steam injection, and this is continuous. So what you're doing is you're tailoring a geophysical monitoring tool from space strategically for, in my case, in my laboratory, for certain deformation. And the background missions are being used for, for other, other, other things. And that's been programmed to be watched on these critical areas. And that's my story. Thank you. Uh, we do have time for questions. I have a question. Okay. Um, so uh, you see the inflation from the injection of steam, but have you monitored how the response is after the steam is no longer applied? Oh, oh yes. Um, when the steam does not apply, the land sinks. It swells and sinks. But the question is, uh, you know, th this is all programmed in the sense of how much steam uh, is, is being injected based on, on depth, based on the pressure and so forth. So we do, we do, we do monitor this. This is an example of the inflation and also this, you know, this, the subsidence. But if, if, if you inflate it too much, we, we do have spills. So when, when the engineers come and says, well, the spill is beca because uh, of some other reasons, we say, no, no, you know, we, we just slap their hands in the courts, so to speak. Okay, okay thanks. Okay. 